Hey everybody, so um, I wanted to share with you guys like how I deal with skeptics sometimes or with critics because everybody's a critic, right? And doing this work, being a like professional psychic medium and spiritual teacher, you get a lot more heat many times than you would just going and working like a regular job, you know? Um, and for me, um, like I always post online, I'm always posting on my Instagram or I'm posting on my Facebook and sometimes whenever I'm posting stuff, you'll have people who don't know who I am or know what I do. They'll come on there and they'll just like mouth off or they'll give their two cents. And their two cents is shit because they don't know who I am. They don't know what I do and they don't know um, my background or, or what, I, what I bring to the table. So there was a, actually there was a, a person um, this morning I was going through after I was having my cup of coffee. So I was going through um, the different posts and all that. <clears throat> and I saw somebody post something and it was just a critic. It was just someone criticizing or making a comment without having any like awareness of who I was or what I did. Um, and usually whenever people post stuff, like I just leave it alone because like why waste my time? I don't really feel like wasting my time trying to, um, trying to get anybody to think anything about me or trying to get anybody to change their mind or opinion about me. They're going to think what they want to think unless they have a direct experience. And then at that point that may change their mind. Um, but in this instance, I felt the need to comment or to respond because I felt like it was a great opportunity for me to share who I am. And a lot of times people don't realize that sometimes when someone is criticizing you or sometimes when someone is bringing something to your attention, you have an opportunity to show who you are and not only to that person, but to others as well. So I actually felt that the question was pretty relevant and I decided to go ahead and answer it. So let me show you what uh, the the uh, conversation was. So, <clears throat> um, so this woman on Facebook, she had wrote, she had written, she says, how can you do a reading on someone you've never met? Um, and I think it's more to do with the fact that like, because I do, m most of my, my readings are, either via email, um, via phone, or via video call. Um, and whenever I'm doing like my Facebook Lives on Wednesdays, uh, I just go based off of like the name and the picture, right? But I immediately connect with the energy because my intention is to connect with the energy. So I connect with the energy and then I start to sense stuff about that person and I share what I sense. Many times I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong. It, that's, that's, part of the, that's part of the thing, like psychics have an accuracy uh, accuracy rate and some of us are going to be right most of the time the people who suck at it are going to be wrong most of the time but um so in this comment she had wrote she says how can you do a reading on someone you've met you've never met and then this other person chimed in um, and responded and said you know it's name and date of birth right and so the other person the first poster she responded she says um, uh, with name and date of birth, you can Google anyone. And then I was like, this is a great opportunity for me to like go and give a really clear answer, not only for this person, but also for anybody else who doesn't know who I am, right? Or what I do. So this was my response, right? <clears throat> so it's, um, of course you can. We give our information to everyone these days, which is true. I mean, you, all of our shit is all over the damn place. You can Google anything and everyone. Um, so there's, it's, so for someone to think that you can't be looked up or someone can't look you up is ridiculous, right? So I don't know where people get the idea that you know a psychic um, does they they can't have any information or whatever. I'm like that's BS. Um, when you go to like a detective and you tell them solve a crime, okay, well, what do you think is the crime? Who do you think this involves? What the detective needs information to help him kind of zone in on the um, the information on the on the case on what he's trying to discover, what he's trying to unravel about the situation. It's the same thing with psychics. Like we need something to use as an anchor to help us kind of zone in and tune into that person or to that frequency. For me, I use a first name and an age because. I intend to connect. I'm like, hey, God, hey, universe, I want to connect to this person right now at this age in their life. Because if I just tune into a person, I can go into the past and go to the future. I don't need to be going 20 years into the past because that's not relevant today. I want to go to the now and like going forward for like the next year. Because the further out you go, the more can happen that can change the future. But the closer to the present you are, the more detail you can probably get around what's going to happen in the next, you know, year or so. So I try to focus in on that person's like now and their current age, and I use that to help me kind of figure that out. So, um, so it says, 
Um, of course you can. We give our information to everyone these days. So the idea that a psychic can't look you up or Facebook you is unrealistic. I just choose not to because I want to give people a quality reading. Many years ago, I had a psychic look me up on Facebook before my reading because we can't read ourselves, which we can't really. I mean, we can we can sometimes have these moments where we receive information or we're given information from the universe or something becomes known to us or our intuition kind of kicks in. But to be able to tell my own future is really difficult. And I actually go into this in detail in my psychic development class because there's what I call three levels of um, objectivity. The closer you are to the subject you're reading, meaning the closer you are in emotional connection, so the more you care about the thing that you're trying to read, the less accurate you're gonna be. The less you care or the less invested interest you have, the better you'll be able to sense detail because you're not, your emotional state isn't affecting how you're able to perceive, how you're able to sense. And so the closer you are to the subject that you're trying to read, it's going to be harder and your accuracy is just going to go to shit. Um, that's why I really cannot read myself. I can sense stuff and sometimes I get stuff, some little you know insights, but I really can't read myself. And then to try to read a family member or my sister or whatever, sometimes I get stuff, but it's not going to be like reading a stranger where I have no invested interest in their life or their future. So I can be as honest with myself about what I'm sensing as possible. With my sister, I don't want to see anything wrong or bad happen to her. So whatever comes up that may even line up with that kind of energy, I'm not going to be able to sense it. Same thing with myself. I don't want to see something that I, I, I don't want to go through. So if I can't, um, if I don't really want to see that, then I'm not going to see everything as clearly as I need to. Okay. So back to this. So um, many years ago, I had a psychic look me up on Facebook before my reading because we can't read ourselves with her. And when she told me that I went off on her, you don't do that. And she had the audacity to call me a nasty person because I called her out on it. I mean, come on. And it, this is so true. Um, so I, a few years ago, I had um, booked a session with a psychic and she called me at the time of the appointment and I didn't hear the call. And if you, if you call my number, you're going to get rerouted to my assistant or you're going to get rerouted to like the system. Um, if it's not family, like if you're not family, I'm never going to get your message. I'm never going to get your, your text or anything like that. So you'll go immediately reroute to the, um, the system. And the system basically says, you know, Hey, go online, book your appointment online. Don't, don't try to call and make an appointment all over the phone. Cause it's not going to happen. You got to go online. You got to make your own appointment. Um, but it's easy. It's simple. Um, but she heard the message and then she decided to go online and look me up. She didn't know I was a psychic. She didn't know what I did, who I was or whatever. And my shit is all over the place. Like I'm very open and honest online about a lot of stuff. So she went to, so she got my website from the message thing and then she went and looked me up and then she autom automatically, she had all this foreknowledge about who I was or what I did. So that pissed me off because I'm like, look, I'm booking a session because I want you to be obje objective in the way you're sensing things and I want you to be honest with me. So for you to go looking at my shit and looking me up online, like what the hell is that all about? So that kind of pissed me off because it's like a, a, a rule. Like you don't go looking people up if you're going to do a reading on them. You just don't do that because how are you going to be able to be accurate or honest? You're already contaminating your, your understanding of them. Now, granted... When you are doing a reading, yes, it's nice to have a specific question sometimes because you want to know what they're wanting to know, um, but you don't need to have all this background information. And usually in my readings, I don't actually ask people for anything up front. I, um, well, if they're doing like a 15 minute Q&A, yeah, you're just going to ask me the questions you want me to answer. But if you're doing like a life analysis, I've, I, I'm 100% talking out of my ass for like the first uh, 10 or 15 minutes. So everything that I'm giving you is just me sharing what I'm getting, what I'm feeling, whatever. Then you can ask me your questions. That way I have an idea or I have some sort of um, framework for what I'm working in. Um, and then we can go into more like sharing information and you can tell me whatever. But I, tr I really don't wanna know that much because I wanna be as honest about the situation as possible, right? So, um, um, so come on. So some of us in the industry actually have an ethical code we go by. So I don't look anyone up prior to a session. Not only that, but honestly, I just don't care enough to do all that work. That's just too much trouble going looking for information. I just don't want to waste my time doing that. I'm a pretty lazy guy and sitting at a computer looking at pe looking people up sounds really boring unless it's an ex. Um, which is it's funny because, yeah, it is. I mean, I really don't. I really don't care. Like, I... I get up, I work my ass off, 
Um, I do a lot of different things, but I don't want to have to work harder than I have to. So I would rather just be good at being a psychic or be good at sensing stuff than to spend 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes, an hour before every appointment looking that person up. Not only that, but I do about 10 or 15 appointments a day with clients. And so at that time on to each person that I have to look up, that's a lot of shit that you have to look up and that's a lot of time wasted. I don't really want to do all that. That's just too much trouble. It's too much trouble. I would rather just like, I would rather be hiking, spending time with my partner and playing with my cats or watching the great British British. Bake Off show, which is a really good show. Y'all should watch it if you haven't seen it. Um, since I'm I'm good at what I do, and I literally have hundreds of positive reviews on reputable review sites from people I've read for who have nothing but good things to say and validate my predictions. That and also about seventy and eighty to eighty percent of the information I give you hasn't happened yet. You can't Google the future, which you know majority of stuff that I'm going to tell people it hasn't happened yet. Like it's still stuff that's coming down the road or that's going to happen within the next year or two. So a, a lot of stuff that I give people, it's it's not, it hasn't occurred. So you can't go with the future, right? Um, thanks for your question, but I stand by my reputation. Look me up and you'll see I have nothing to hide and I'm 100% completely honest about who I am, what I do, and why I care. Um, you don't need to buy anything from me. I offer free classes on YouTube that help you develop your own psychic ability because everyone is psychic and you can do what I do. Also, I offer free readings weekly on Facebook Live and if you guys don't know that, go to my Facebook Live and sign up or just like um, follow me on Facebook Live because uh, on my a professional page um, because I uh, do that like once a week. I'm actually going to increase that because I want to do more of it. Um, I love doing readings for people like that. Um, but it's it's just, um, yeah, I do it on Facebook Live. So go on there and you can, you can sign up and that way you can get in and hopefully get your question asked um, at one of the Facebook Lives. Um, weekly on Facebook Live for people who can't afford a session because it's my way of giving back for what God has given me. Um, I, I also work for free with law enforcement agencies and families in missing persons cases. So I do more than make money with my abilities and skills. Um, yeah, I've, I've worked with uh, a few um, cases and I've worked with some families who have had missing people and all that other stuff. It's sad. It's super intense. Honestly, I don't like doing it because it's so emotionally taxing. And when you're having to sit across the table from the child or the son of someone that is like missing his mom, um, it's like intense. And so I don't really care um, to 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 do that because it's so emotionally um, a lot. But I am willing to do it if I if I need to if someone needs the help right, um, and so I do that. Um, but it's not fun. And anybody who like watches those shows on TV and they want to glorify like oh my god I want to be like a psychic detective no like my teacher Pam Pam Coronado she's um, a professional psychic medium as well and she does exclusively missing persons cases and stuff of that nature. Um, I just props to her because for her to have been doing this for so many years and to deal with like the law enforcement agencies and to deal with all these different um, cases it's she's got some big ass balls I gotta tell you because she really puts herself out there and she's good at what she does and that's why she got her show so um but I have a, yeah, so what was it? Um, so I do more than make money with my abilities and skills, but I have a family to support, bills to pay. And since this is my full-time job, I have to charge for my time with people who want a one-on-one -on -one with me. Psychics and mediums who don't charge probably don't have, don't do this full-time, have another part-time job or someone who financially supports them. Even priests and doctors earn a paycheck from their work. Um, and I, you know, like sometimes I've had people say, you know, my grandmother was a psychic and she always said you know you, sh you should never charge for this gift it's not a gift it's an ability it's a skill I've spent years refining it your grandmother probably did not do this for a living she probably didn't even have a job she probably was supported by her husband or some other form of income um, and so she can say that because she has no bills to have to worry about that she has to cover using this ability so she can do it every now and then when she feels like it or when she wants to but if you have to support a family if you have to pay bills you're probably gonna have to charge um, and I do plenty of free work so for me to do this because 
because I have to support myself. This is what I gotta do. Um, priests make a paycheck. You know, Joel Osteen makes a shell of money because he's up there inspiring people. Um, so people make money from the work that they do from their passion. And if you can find a passion that you can make money from, do it. Because I would rather you do that than spend your time working at a dead-end job or a job that just frustrates the hell out of you, personally. But people who say, like, this is a gift. My mom said you should never charge for this. What well, did your mom do this full time? Was she supporting a family, you know, using this? No, she probably had a job she was working at and then she did this part-time. Um, so that's just BS. Um, psychics and mediums, um, da -da 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 -da. Mm -hmm. where was I? Um, I always tell God, send me the people I can help. If I can't help them or this is not for them, then keep them away. I trust that God knows what he's doing. Lots of love to you. Um, and that's true. I, I have this thing with God and I say God is a he, but honestly for me, God is, is male and female, both, you know, po you know, positive and negative. God is energy for me. So I don't see God as like a physical person or as like an old man in a chair in heaven for me god is this energy and this source of love and it's i call it source energy or the universe etc um but i trust that the universe is going to bring me the people that i can help people who i can be of service to and then the people who i don't need to be dealing with i trust that the universe is going to keep them away from me and that's more law of attraction but it is it's my belief it's my trust in the universe that i'm going to deal with the people that i need to deal with right um if uh p.s energy is energy we are limitless spiritual beings and your body is just a shell the way you can send a text message to a loved one that says i love you and they feel it is the same way i can connect with another person's energy via email phone or video and still sense things from them um and then i just and that was it that was the end of the message um and that's people don't understand like the connection like how can you connect or sense things through like a message or through words or whatever i'm like because your intention it's the intention um i don't actually even need to talk to a person just having their first name and their age helps me to kind of intend to connect with that person and i trust that the universe is going to give me information that lines up with that person in that time in their life and the right person um sometimes people have said you know well my yeah you i know you said i was pregnant but my best friend just found out she's pregnant i'm like no i wasn't trying to read your best friend i was intending for you so i'm pretty sure it's you it's not your friend um and so many people like freak out because like i don't want to get pregnant or i you know i'm not ready to have a baby yet so it's kind of funny when that happens. Um, but yeah, it's it's dealing with dealing with skeptics, dealing with critics. I really don't. I, I just avoid dealing with those people just because people, everyone has an opinion, just like everybody has a butthole. And some of those opinions are shit. So you can't take all that criticism. You cannot take everything that everybody says um, and, and use it as a weapon against yourself because it is, you're using it as a weapon against yourself. And it's what Debbie Lovato was talking about a few days ago. I think I saw her on somewhere where, you know, know um she's a human being and she still reads whatever and it still affects her um and i'm the same way i'm a human being i'm affected by what i, what I, what I read i try to not read into some of those things but i can't help it sometimes because it just like uh but it's also helping me to develop like a harder shell and a harder like exterior so that way i can be more of a voice in the world and I don't have to be you know if I'm attacked or if someone comes at me I can handle it a little bit better so for me it is some practice building up a shell not only that but I mean I grew up in when I was in school in high school and middle school like they teased the shit out of me and people used to I mean call me all kinds of names and they treated me like garbage and I had no backbone I had no shell today it's a different story today I'm a different person and I think I've built myself up where I can handle things better but even then, I'm still human and I'm still affected by what people say and what people do. So I try to avoid that. But sometimes you get an opportunity to show who you are and to express yourself and to kind of go into it in detail for those who want to understand or who want to know more about, you know, who you are and where you're coming from. So I thought this was a great opportunity and I wanted to share it with you guys. Well, I have a very busy day ahead of me, so I am going to get to that. I love you all and I will see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.